our views, this whole podcast is fucking skewed based on our upbringing, based on where we live, based on what we see. I walk out there and there's like a million Chinese people. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I'm just being for real. Like, I don't ever feel Yo. different. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Not a part of the crowd. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a million Asian people that look just like me where I am. But like, there's tons of listeners that are in places where they walk out and like, clearly they are the different people. They're the other people. Welcome to the worst Asian podcast, where a couple Asian American millennials give you our shitty opinions on all things Asian. My name is Linji. I'm here with my co-host extraordinaire wearing the same t-shirt, not because it's the same day. Nope. Just because uh, I'm ben, homeless. <laughs> ben only has That's one why. t-shirt. That's right. I would offer to give you one of my t-shirts, but you might need three of them to fit your body. It's going to be a crop top. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, ben, um, I'm going to start this off in the most weird way because the only way our friends can ask you anything is if it's through me, apparently. So Yes, I noticed that. We have a friend that is getting married next month. You're invited to this wedding. He erroneously and stupidly gave you a plus one. He would like me to ask you <laughs> because he can't get in touch with you, apparently. Oh, fuck. Are you planning to bring a plus one? You do not have to. He just needs to know. Don't say yes and then, don't, and then not bring anyone. Or you can just say no and just come by yourself. So I am somehow the vessel in which he has to ask this via this live podcast recording. Wow. Okay. So, Ben. Do you plan to use your plus one? Yes or no? So and if any of you viewers want to join me on this uh, <laughs> wedding, please, this is your chance now. Just kidding. Uh, no, just, just to make it easier, I'll go solo dolo. You'll go solo. Okay. Solo. It so, just makes it so much easier. Okay. So what I'm going to say right now is I'm going to literally text this person <laughs> and tell them that you are not bringing anyone. Okay, Holy okay. shit. I- uh, ben said he is not bringing a plus one. Unless, uh, unless no, 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 plus one. Fuck. Okay, and you're committing live on there, so there we go. Okay, that makes my life a little bit easier, though. Holy shit, my bad. I didn't. I don't even re- recollect about this right now. Yes, yes, yes. Woo. Were you aware that you had a wedding to go to next month? No. <laughs> my bad, bro. Uh, you might want to look at the date and make sure you're off that day. Yes, I do. Thank okay, you. So this is less of a. This is less of a confirmation if you're bringing one and more of a reminder that you actually have a wedding to go to next month. It sounds about right. Oh, what, what, by the way, when is it? You know, you're the one person that, that would have a non-zero percent chance of missing his own wedding. Of my own of wedding? Of your own wedding. Not to say that it's likely, but there is a non-zero percent chance you will oh. miss your own wedding. Oh, hell yeah, bro. Yeah, definitely. I'll probably have to FaceTime it. Like, like, oh my God, babe, I'm so I'm so late here. Let me, let's okay, just if you ever get to the point where that actually happens, please do not make me one of your groomsmen. Oh, you're definitely going to be. Oh, fuck. That's right. Okay, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Who is your best man? You can You can choose to not answer this question if you don't want to. I have choices, but uh, I'll think about it, though. Okay, fine. Fair enough. Guys, if you want to be the best man at uh, Ben's what wedding... What the fuck, bro? <laughs> that's not how this fucking works. There's no pull. No, 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 no. Do like no. a thing for charity to be the best man at your no, wedding. No, 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 no. Don't get out of this. The fine print is you actually have to have a wedding for it to happen. So if you never get married, the, this that prize is, never actually gets realized. That is true. Um, I'm just the vessel in which people have to ask you things again, which is kind of annoying on my end. You're like Paul Revere, bro. All right, guys. Um, oh, I, I should probably ask. I haven't asked. Ben, how are you today? Um, I'm good since we talked about like maybe 40 minutes ago. What are you talking about? That was a completely oh different God, week. That right. was last the shirt, week. I forgot about the shirt and everything. Different shirt, everything. What are you talking about? It's not the same day. Oh my God, you're right. Um, We never record multiple episodes in one day. You're right. That is true. And we're not about to record three episodes today. Hollywood <laughs> magic. Uh, I feel good, man. I feel really good. Yeah. We're almost almost summer. Yes. I don't know it's if hot. that... Yeah, it's hot. It's as hot as hell. Fuck. We're trying to deal with this heat because... The AC is on. Ben Wait. does not think it's on, but it's on, but it's on quiet. All right, fine. I'm trying to also deal with this heat. Normally, we would drink hot coffee, but today we have a donation from our CTO. He gave us this uh, overpriced cold brew machine. That which sucks is, dick. Which is literally just a giant bucket inside of a cl- inside of a glass jar. Yes. Yo, how much was this? Did you ever ask him about Actually, this? No, well, it was free because he donated it to us. He's downsizing because of the baby, so he has uh, to make okay. room and stuff. So if you guys want to buy this, it's only $300 <laughs> right now, right? I think. I actually think this thing is $100. Get the fuck out. I actually think... You have to talk louder, but I actually think it's, it's $100. Oh, I think this is silver, bro. It's not silver. It's just... Just, just lie with me, bro. Guys, if you want to make cold brew at home, life hack... 
just take a large French press, fill it, and then throw it into the fridge. That's it. <laughs> so that's literally all you have to do. It makes us. I think it just makes it the best. It's the same exact shit. French press, grinds, cold water into the fridge. After a day or two, you're good to go. If you don't know how much coffee to put, put too much coffee. It's fine. Because exactly. here's, the, here's the thing: if you make it too strong, you can then just dilute it with more regular water. If you make it too weak, then there's nothing you can do about it. But if you make your coffee too strong, you just dilute that shit later. Do you feel like you didn't do enough in this? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how exactly to work this thing. And normally this would be way too much coffee grinds. Thank you for asking how I am. Oh, um, um, how are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Are you really fine? I'm actually not doing that fine, but it's fine. Fuck. It's okay. We'll get through this. We can all power through things in our lives. I've got that extra gear in my life where even if shit's going on, I can power through it. Uh, I'm missing that gear, but... Uh, you are really... We were just talking about this in the group chat in which you kind of... Uh, I went ballistic. <laughs> That's pretty much what it was. I I woke up and I wanted to fucking smoke. I was like, I'm not taking this shit. Yeah. Just to give some context, because that makes no sense. Um, We have a group chat with uh, Ben and I and some of our close friends and everything. Yes. And I think somehow this morning it got to the topic of why we don't have an episode on the right day. Yes. You know, this episode is not yesterday. It's uh, <laughs> I, I'm, trying, I'm, trying, I'm trying to fake this podcast timeline, but I'm forgetting where we are. We were delayed on an episode, so yes. our friends had texted us what happened. And then eventually it, it got to the part where I'm just venting. And I think when I vent, I vent very constructively. I don't like yeah, curse right. or just say fuck this or fuck that. I actually try to put... You're very factual. <laughs> yes, I, That's the best way of I putting I lay the it. facts. Exactly. But I think they were very supportive of me venting. Yes. And then I also tried to realize that to the third party or the fourth party or the fifth party, Ben, it looks like we're just shitting on him a lot. So when Ben woke up to this large string of conversations that were not exactly... Um, 300 messages. <laughs> I counted. him. They were, I kept the receipts. That's ben, I uh, lost his shit for a little bit. I, I did. I think that was the first time I actually like legit like fucking... Yeah, ben had to... Uh, Lose his shit for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I was like, holy shit. I was like, yo. But it's okay. We're all friends. This is how we get through shit. Exactly. It's all fine. Yeah. I think everything's okay now. I- uh, no, honestly, um, what's it? Yeah, like... We I- all have to vent in our various different ways. We all have like... Yeah. What I'm trying to say is that it's okay you lost your shit. I Thanks, think dude. it's just a natural part of it. Thank you. It doesn't I- matter if you're wrong or right. I'm just saying like, that's not the point. And I'm not trying to insult you. No, no, no. I'm just trying to say like, we all need a vehicle and other friends to uh, trauma dump on. Yes. I think I did a pretty good job of like, you know, expressing myself. <laughs> uh, uh, too many fuck, uh, F-bombs. <laughs> Lots of F-bombs. A lot of F-bombs. I will admit about Lots that. Lots of acronyms with the F-bomb inside. I did, yes. But <laughs> but I think for the most part, I think I made my point, you know, very clear. Yes, yes. You know, and I felt bad. And, you know, I admitted like, hey, like, I love you guys. My bad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, don't fucking talk shit. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if the listeners actually care about our personal lives or if they care about the actual topic. Whatever the topic might be. Because I think sometimes we do a a little bit of... Both? A little bit of inside baseball, guys. We do less interviews now. And once again, I'm all up for constructive criticism. Um, If you want more interviews, let us know. But I do less interviews now because scheduling with Ben is an absolute nightmare. Yeah. And um, I don't want to like schedule interviews and then have that person be stood up. Although... I was thinking the other day, it's okay if I schedule an interview and you don't show up because then I can just take over the interview. It's like the thing with uh, Justin and Johnny last year where you didn't show up because of your dog. Oh, you, uh, yeah, yeah. Like you're actually like you're actually okay I with that. I would be fine with it, and that gives me like an avenue to to redirect this podcast when I kick you off. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding about that part. I'm All just right. kidding. Fuck you! I'm quitting this shit right now. I think this is people, our last episode. Going back to my question, I don't know if people actually care about our personal lives or if they care about the topic. So do. you guys let me know. You guys uh, sign to our DMs. Let us know. Do you care about this bullshit? Do you not care about this bullshit? What do you like? What do you don't like? Because at the end of the day, we're losing our mental sanity for your entertainment. So please let us know. <laughs> 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 I'm uh, laughing through all the pain. <laughs> oh, man. That is true. It's kind of a miracle. Like this is actually happening right now. I've never been more confident in myself that I... Uh, I'm able to produce this podcast in lieu of you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. This speaks volumes about my ability to get anything done. Damn. There's never going to be a, a situation where I'm like, Lindsay Dorn, I'm, I'll do this by myself. There will, there will never I'll be. Nope. Nope. Yeah, nope. exactly. All, all I will do is it's just been like... It's been two years and you don't even know what buttons to press on this mixer. I would just do like meet the person in person and just do a selfie. I'm like, this is how <laughs> we're doing it. No mics involved in anything. Uh, okay. What the fuck are we talking about? Ben, today I have a very interesting topic. 
Oh, uh, I don't like this. Okay, we talked about this. You actually don't have the show notes for this episode because I want it to be a semi surprise. So I'm gonna pull out these show notes. Uh, I feel like I'm on like Bory right now, like Jerry <laughs> no, no. Springer shit. Through this door, we have. There's no one through the door. All right, fine. Don't look around, Ben. I know you are the biggest fan of AI. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 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 you're good, man. Long time listeners. Oh, okay, yeah, you're good, bro. Long time listeners of the podcast know that you are the biggest fan of AI. So, um, I like to use AI to solve, like, you know, to do minor tasks and to like solve small problems that make oh. my life a little bit easier. Shout out to ChatGPT. Shout out to uh, it being free right now. Still, what I was interested in is because a lot of this podcast is us talking about Asian topics. A lot of it is also like normalizing things within our culture and our community. And what's the point of all that to solve these underlying problems in society? Okay. You and I take a more humorous approach on, but that's just because we're trying to like make life of sense. Sometimes do entertainment and laughs. You can like learn more than do fucking CNN documentary no, kind of shit, right? TED talk shit. Not to say that those don't also have its place, but I think there's different branches in which you can try to deal with these topics. Right. Um. So, anyways, um, you know, forget all of that. Yeah. Get to your point. What, what, How what would are you doing? AI solve Asian problems? I asked my best friend ChatGPT. First, wow. how to solve a bad coals problem. It couldn't give me any good answers. So next, I moved on to how we can solve various Asian problems. This might be the first of its kind, I got to say, what you're doing right now. Yes. This idea came to me when I was in the bathroom. Damn. Okay. It actually takes a lot to get these answers. So I had to have a long conversation with ChatGPT about what the podcast is about and what a bunch of other things. It felt very weird to try to lay the groundwork to ask these questions to a... Like you had to build up to it? I had it? to build up to it because I can't just ask solve this problem. I right? have to say like... We have a podcast. We talk about X, Y, and Z. We're trying to do this goal. We have this target audience. Please help me to solve these X problems. So you're pitting me against ChatGPT pretty much. Oh, no, no, no. You would lose if it's ChatGPT. Like, oh. for sure, you would lose if it's ChatGPT. Oh, so yeah? there, are, there are various things in which I asked ChatGPT, and I actually might make this into a two-part episode series because there's actually a lot in here, and uh, it touches based on so many things. And I know you and I are going to probably go off on a lot of tangents. Okay. So there's no way that this is going to all fit into one episode. So I feel if like it, this is going to be very offensive. It's not. It's not. Remember, it's a robot. They're programmed not to be racist. Okay, this... Pro- <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, bro, I don't know, but fuck it. This robot is programmed not to be racist. So the first thing I asked ChatGPT to deal with, and once again, I'm going to list the problem, and I'm going to give you ChatGPT's response, and then Ben and I will just talk about it a little bit. Shit on chat. All see right. where that goes. See if it actually makes some sense. Because I think... Okay. Briefly looked at this. It makes a lot of sense. Okay. So the first and biggest problem is dealing with Asian stereotyping and racism. Now, I don't have to tell you what the problem is. No matter where the fuck you are in the world, you know what the problem is, right? Here we go. Chap GPT's summarized response to dealing with Asian stereotype and racism. You need to promote cultural understanding and education. Encourage educational institutes to incorporate Asian American history or insert in lieu of American, wherever country you are, Asian history, contributions, and experiences into their curriculum. Okay. This can help dispel stereotypes and foster empathy and understanding. Media representation. Support Asian American artists, filmmakers, and content creators to tell their own stories. Anti-bias and anti-racism training implemented programs for individuals, organizations, and institutes to address subconscious biases and challenge stereotypes. First, what are your overall thoughts on this? Uh, you lost me at the first sentence. I well, the, was this too many words for no, you? No, no, no. Um, those are actually very sound, you know, good <laughs> first steps about like how to approach this. Ben, are you uh, impressed or not impressed by ChatGPT so far? I'm like indifferent. You're indifferent to it? Only Why? Be- only because the fact that I could think of that. Oh, I think that's a big caveat to think that you could say these things in such uh, well-formed sentences. First of all, right? The first part about the whole like, you know, incorporating into education. I think that's actually very fucking important. Yeah. And we did talk about that. Did we? we yeah, dude. What the <laughs> fuck? I yeah. don't remember that we talked about this. Yeah, dude. Even like the whole like AAPI kind of thing. Oh, right? yes, we talked about the history of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, look at that, Mr. But, Miyagi. You know, it's, that's actually easier in like certain places in America. Like, for instance, here in New York, they're trying to implement that, right? Trying to incorporate Asian American studies okay. into the education for elementary school. 
in Florida, they're doing that as well. They they just the passed the bill there. California. Okay. It's like how you try to incorporate correct Black history into our fucking education. Like right, that itself is like such a battle, right? Right. And I would say like to us, it seems like such an obvious thing. Oh. Uh-huh. But in practice, it's so hard getting the entire country to implement correct cultural history into textbooks. I agree with that. So, you know, a lot of it has to do with like legislation, right? Yes. So wherever you are and stuff. But it is true. Like, chat GPT is right. You know, that's the best way of doing education, right? Education. That's the best way. But, like, how do you educate your kids when... Because your kids are only a certain age for a certain time. They're only in elementary uh-huh. school, junior high school, high school for a certain amount of time, right? Uh-huh. We know politics, legislation, anything to do with the government it takes fucking decades to pass, right? I agree with you on that. That's why the second part what chat GPT said about, like, social media influence, you know, like, the entertainment and stuff. It says... um. Advocate for diverse portrayals of Asian Americans in media, right. film, television, support content creators to tell their own stories. I think that is a way more powerful tool right now that we're experiencing. Is that directly correlated with social media and internet, you think? Because social you- media, internet, you know, entertainment in general. Yeah. You know, all of that, it's it's happening right now. We did an episode recently about beef. Right? Yes. And, you know, we always just talk about like how like Asian American or even like Asian music industry is impacting America, you know? So I just think like the progress might not be perfect, but it's happening. So you're saying like as opposed to standard education via the government or your local government? Yeah. Just the internet, different branches of entertainment are probably more valuable in getting kids at a younger age. Cause like, I think, oh, hell yeah, bro. I think this is built on like, how do we educate younger kids, right? Like, how okay. do we get them at an early age to understand things? Cause it's much easier to like mold younger kids when their brains are so developing, when they're like laying a foundation for what they believe on things. Right. You know, even like sports right now, I believe that we're starting to see a lot more Asian Americans or just Asians dominating certain sports. Uh, you know? I would argue that you just have a couple. They're dominating to a greater extent as opposed to a quantity. I think it's a quality thing now with Asian American sports athletes as opposed right. to a quantity. But it's becoming more of a like, norm now. You get what I'm saying now? It's like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, it's not that surprising. It's Where- like Shohei is great not because he's Japanese and great. It's Shohei is great because he's literally... He's like redefining the baseball. Like he's a once in a lifetime generational player. People say he's like Babe Ruth, but if you really look at the stats, he's way beyond Babe Ruth. Yes. So Babe Ruth actually stopped pitching when he was 24. Yes. Otani's still pitching and he's 28. And he's dominating in ways on both sides of it, in which Babe Ruth did not. So when people say he's like a modern day Babe Ruth, in some ways that's diminishing his actual stats. Exactly. So I think what ChatGPT said, the fact that we can find examples to portray what they're saying, it's, you know, it's a good thing. Whether or not, like, how effective or how, like, fast it's doing. Do you think it's one of those things where it's much easier said than done? And this is probably going to, like, be true for every fucking thing in, on this entire list, but it's easy for it to say do X, Y, and Z because I'm sure if you asked any educated person that's in the space, in the Asian American space, they would probably give you these answers. So it's not like ChatGPT or AI is really giving you anything that's... um revolutionary i agree i would say that to your point i do believe like i would also prioritize the internet social media entertainment because i think that's an avenue into people's hearts and thoughts that's much more um accessible than trying to like change the government are you like me do you like just have very little faith in your government just overall to get things done quickly and in an efficient manner oh yeah dude i'm like the perfect example i'm like alex jones to the max bro like i you know i have all these like theories and you know, like the Owl Society. People have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about right now. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know. Please don't. Yeah. Let's not go down that road. All right, fine, fine, fine. Fine. JFK is alive. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. But pretty much what I'm saying is education is kind of, our education system kind of sucks ass, right? Yes, yes, yes. And in some weird ways, like social media, entertainment, all that, it's actually the driving force behind it. Right, for better or worse. That's yeah. why you need to use a very powerful weapon to your advantage. Right. Now we live in a world where... um. Asian Americans were stereotyped where like, oh, you have to be lawyer, da da da. Now we're kind of like experiencing like, oh my God, like we're starting to believe that we have the options, mm-hmm. you know, and we can actually achieve something a little more, you know, creative, courageous kind of thing. Yeah. You know, more avant garde. And it might not be as fast as we want it to be, but right. the progress is there. It's very slow, but you know, you just hope that it's not like you're making progress and then suddenly you're just going backwards. I've always said, and I think you said this like the best way into someone's culture is via the food. Food is the language of love. It's a language of understanding someone else's culture. Yeah. 
if you mm-hmm. can enjoy the person's food, and sometimes even if you can't, you know, if, if it's like a spice tolerance thing, which is like a flavor thing or a preference thing, uh, I think it's still like knowing more about someone's food culture, then you can get a better understanding of them as a people. Right. So, for example, flushing. We lived here pretty much all our lives, right? Now, when you look at flushing, it's like I see a lot of non Asian people come here to like experience flushing. Right. It's like, holy shit. We're... I have very mixed feelings on that, by the way. Oh, really? I do. Okay. So let's just see in one side. It's like the fact that people are making flushing a destination spot. Yes. That blows my mind. Right. Because flushing for the most part has not actually, in some ways it has changed. It has, in some ways it has oh, not changed. But, yeah. but it's always been like a hub for authentic Asian food. It's just that now it's that to the max. Right. Right. It's, it's become like flushing is becoming a more global, you know, um, destination right. location. Right. Just hearing like, non-Asians try to learn our language it's like holy shit that's amazing language is like much tougher I think language takes a commitment learning about people's food via the internet whether it's on social media or YouTube or recipes just like trying shit out yeah. just like exploring that entire thing I think that's much more accessible Yeah. okay this is the other bad part about the internet the fucking trolls right Okay. unlike in real life the internet gives you this barrier of um, it's like protection so people are bound to say things that they would not have the balls to say if they saw you in real life. If you said anything to someone in real life, that means you've got the courage to be racist, which okay. I which I would say like takes the balls to be openly racist in person towards someone. Can you uh, can you please This looks like dog food, right? Or you should be eating dog. <laughs> Yo, look at some of our stuff on like our comments on YouTube and, and uh, across social media, we've oh, got multiple like dog meat comments, right? Really? I just ignore that shit because I don't feed the trolls. But I'm trying to say a lot of these people uh-huh. would not have the balls to fucking say these things yeah. in real life. And also, guys, dog meat is fucking delicious. All right? Just <laughs> for the record. Ben. All right? <laughs> I can't tell where this is going. <laughs> there are still parts of Korea where an older generation of people still eat dog meat. But please, let's not uh, make it even worse, though. Oh, man. Look, what I'm just trying to say is like, uh, we don't give a fuck about like you guys trying to troll us. You know, yeah. you're ignorant. You're uneducated. You're probably miserable. Yeah, we're going to sleep easy at night. You know what's weird? You shouldn't be talking to the mic because I'm sure these trolls don't listen to the podcast. So, it, Oh, you think they just see it? Yeah, and, of and course. Dude, just the, like, the fucking trolls because we put out clips on the internet. 30-second snippets. Anyone can listen to a 30-second uh, snippet and make like a stupid racist comment, okay. which I don't give a shit about. If you take the effort to listen to our entire episode and you want to be racist, in some ways, I give you some credit. Okay. You know what I mean? Like you sat down. You did your research. You did an hour of listening to us go back and forth and you still made the dog meat comment. Yeah. You know what? I applaud your racism. Even though you can go like suck a dick, I still in some ways applaud your effort toward your racism. Yeah, that's true. That's, that takes a lot of dedication. Right. Yo, so. haters are going to hate. You know right. what I'm saying? But damn, I, I didn't know we had dog meat. What comment. about this last part of it where it says um, you should try to incorporate anti-bias and anti-racism training inside institutions and businesses and companies? I think that's a reach, to be honest. You and I don't really work for large corporate entities. I don't work for any entity. <laughs> you, you work for your own company, I feel you. Yes. <laughs> I work for my wife and my son. That's like, those are my two biggest bosses, there by the way. Go. There you so go. I'm trying to say like, and I've worked for semi-small companies in the past when I did um, work. Okay. I was it took like, me a second to find that word. Okay. So we never had like a department that was big enough to like implement it. This like is the, HR. Right. This is the type of thing where I would imagine it's in like a larger corporation where they have people in HR that are trying to like do these kinds of trainings. Ben, please, there is a place for them, but let me hear your thoughts. Yeah, I think that that's overkill. That's is it stupid. overkill or pointless or not worth the effort? It's like when you're trying not to be racist, but then you <laughs> just end up sounding way more racist. You get what I'm saying? Is it? Yeah, because it's like... Like if Google has a bunch of Asian entrepreneurs come and they talk and they give like a talk, what is the actual negative in that? Can you read that shit again? Oh my God. Anti-bias and anti-racism training or training, I guess training. See, that's what I'm saying. See? Uh, so what? They put you in a class for half an hour, one day a month. And you're talking about like not being racist, not being sexist. What is necessarily wrong with that? Even if it has like a low return on investment, even if it's like only helping 5%, it's still something, no? I don't know. If you have to be taught not to be a racist, I think that's just like, I don't know. It's just common sense for me. Like, I, I don't understand it's like you have to be taught about that kind of stuff. Would you care if you had coworkers in a large company uh-huh. and they were trained well on not being racist, but they were actually deeply a racist? You're not his friend. You're just his coworker. Would you care 
Would you want to change him so that he's not inwardly racist, even though outwardly he's pretty good not being racist? That's a good example. I would prefer if he just like was honest with me. Oh, you don't like me because I'm Korean? Oh, all right, that's cool. I, I can live with that. You know what I'm saying? Is that better than him just not saying it, being very well-mannered at work? He's perfectly great at work. He does his job. He doesn't offend anyone. The, he's friends with everyone, but just at home, he's like... But that's what I'm saying. Like That right there, that's almost impossible because it's like any little thing that I do, he's probably like that fucking dog meat eater motherfucker. No, like, let's just say he whispers it in his head. Yeah. It doesn't matter that he's inside saying, you know, this, this, that. It's feeding into it. You get what I'm saying? But he's not. He's, he's not doing anything. He's just in his head saying, you're eating dogs. But outwardly, he's like, that's a great looking lunch, Ben. I think that's like terrifying. It's like you're fake and you just can't like admit it. You know, I don't know what it is. It's just, yo, if you don't get along, I'd rather know. There, there has to be somewhere in this country where there are pockets of people that are inwardly have very strong bad thoughts. Okay. But then, Clock in nine to five. We're great with their minority coworkers and so well, it's like, oh man, yo, hey honey, like the blacks are pretty okay. You know, like no, no, no. I'm saying he still hates everyone, but he goes to work and he's okay because he's been trained well. I'm not sure if you get what no, I'm trying no, to say. I, I do. It's just on a human level, it's really hard to like hide your racism. You know, it's also like the level of racism. You get what I'm saying. And then, like, for him to, like, go out of his way to pretend like he likes me. Yeah, because he has to clock in, make money, have a regular job. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's kind of a little weird because that's kind of like an inhuman way of handling things. I don't so know. you're not in favor of, like, work training so that you're not racist? I, I don't know if it's because we're just born in New York and stuff. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of like we don't really give a shit, you know? All I think is, like, unless you are a piece of shit, I don't care if you're black, Spanish, white, Chinese. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? You're saying pieces of shit comes in all colors and races. Yeah, yeah. dude. And like, that's the truth. Like, I have pieces of shit friends that are Korean. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Me too. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I walked into that one. That was good. That was good. One. All right, fine. I'll give you that. Dun, dun, dun. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. yeah, it's not about color. It's just, yo, you're just a piece of shit. So <laughs> okay. that one, I think, is a little overboard, but let's sure, move on to the one new. Once again, I think this is looking like it's going to be a two-part episode because we've because we've all Man, only this... gone through one so far. That was one. That was one thing. Holy okay. Crap. Um, discrimination in education and employment. That's a big problem because I think sometimes right. when you're Asian, whether you're consciously or subconsciously, you're looked over, or other people are given opportunities that you deserve. Okay. Okay. And here's how ChatGPT would solve that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess I guess this first part is about education. Oh. Um. Encourage colleges and universities to consider a broader range of criteria beyond test scores, such as extracurricular, personal achievements, and overcoming adversity. Okay, and that's the part about uh, employment. Encourage companies to implement policies that promote fair hiring practices and ensure equal opportunities for career advancement. I feel like I'm going to say a lot of controversial things. That's but... fine. Um, let's talk about the employment part first, okay? Okay. You and I have both been on the hiring end and the employing hiring. We work. <laughs> Let's say we fucking work, bro. Well, I was trying to say that we've both been hired and hired other people. Okay, like, fine. You've done some hiring. I've done some hiring. Okay. Um, I've been hired. You've been hired. So we've and fired a lot. And fired. For me. <laughs> that's, that's that's for you. That's for yep. you. I've never been fired from anything. Oh shit! Sure. Congrats. Yes. I think. Thank you. Thank you. When you hire someone. Yes. I think I'm a very fair person, but I know that somewhere in the back of my mind, I'm probably making assumptions about a person when they walk in. That's fair. Based on how they look, based on how they talk, based on what I see on their resume. Because or... you're a racist. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm saying it's a human thing. I know. It's a fucking know, human thing to make assumptions about someone, yeah. whether it's for better or worse, right? I agree. You can interview someone and then suddenly you get to the part about, I don't know, fucking sports, right? And, and then they happen to root for the same team that you do. And then you yes. can connect with that person based on like, your history with a sports team. A favorite player. Right. Does that have anything to do with the fucking job? Nothing. That has absolutely nothing to do with the job, right? Okay. But just because you connect on a human level with them about something that you care about, you're probably, and you have to admit that it's true, more likely to hire this person over another person if things are similar. You have that connection. With him, right? There is a human part of it that is probably kind of like... Biased. Biased and... Flawed. Flawed. Thank uh -huh. you, Ben, for your English words. Thanks. This is kind of like a pivot, but do you think AI is better equipped for like hiring people? Ooh, that's a good question, actually. Assuming that you can somehow make a program work the proper way in terms of interviewing and looking at resumes, 
Yeah. If a program doesn't have the same like, oh, we have the same fucking favorite basketball player, right? Like right. it has no thing like that to lean on. It just strictly goes on the criteria. Would AI actually, if it works, be better at hiring and not discriminating against women or different races? So I think in terms of that, I think it can help you to a certain extent. Uh -huh. like it, it can kind of help you filter out something. Okay, so it could do some, like, like, like some preliminary have, filtering. Yeah, you could do like preferences and stuff. Right. Like maybe like, oh, college education, you know, like volunteer work, you know, maybe write down some keywords that you see. Those are more like a hard quantitative tangible things that's exactly a, that's right? not like a personality thing because i think a lot of like when you do an interview one-on-one -on -one is you're feeling out the person so like you know like with elon musk right yes our favorite elon musk i love you elon. shout out to twitter by the way hey guys are you guys on threads ben are you on threads no do you know what threads is uh -uh. oh you've been in a hole for a long time so threads is uh our favorite mark zuckerberg and he's part asian because his wife is asian so he's <laughs> <laughs> he, he's a part of the clan okay zuck right. is a part of the clan all right he created how do you not know this? He created a brand new app called Threads, which is basically a Twitter ripoff. And it has over 100 million subscribers. Subscribers were like signups already so far. Oh, shit. And so, uh, so it's like the new, it's the new Twitter. RIP to uh, Twitter. Twitter. Damn. Yo, yeah. dang, he's smart, man. By the way, follow us on Threads. We're at the exact same fucking handle on that as well. I, Worst Asian pod. I did not know that. So, Ben doesn't yeah. know anything. Yes, Ben's been AWOL for a little bit now. Wow. So, find cool. us on Threads. This is where I like to uh, randomly dump my thoughts. Oh, shit. Now I got to like, check what Lindsay says. Yes. I don't um, shit on you, Ben. I saved that for a, a real life. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, let's see. So going back to like the job uh, searching part, right? Yeah, searching part. So I think like maybe AI can play its part in doing some preliminary uh, screenings of someone just to take out like someone that has... Let's say you have a job for like a chef. This person has zero experience cooking, right? Okay, <laughs> like on his resume, Fair. he's never been to culinary school. He's, an, he's an accountant. He's yeah, done, he's like, like, I worked at Cold Stone masonry work nothing related yeah maybe ai is good in filtering that part right but i don't think ai can do like the final steps of hiring where you actually interview someone right so like for elon musk for example he doesn't try to look at like oh like you went to an ivy league you know you got a gp like that's fucking like five thousand, whatever he doesn't care about that yeah what he likes to do is he asks like a specific question which is what was the hardest thing that you ever had to over um that you you know encountered and how did you uh, how did you solve it and when he asks that question, what he pays attention to is how to explain it. Uh -huh. So when someone explains it into great detail, there's emotion involved, he can tell like, oh, this person's legit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like when they talk about the solution, it's like, yeah. oh, something traumatic like that, you don't forget, you know. Mm -hmm. But then when other people try, you know, doing that, if it's, you know, very short, you know, they stutter, he already knows like, okay, that's like his um, way of like figuring out like mm -hmm. your comprehension or your articulate and stuff. Okay, but... Um, I'm looking for a new podcast co-host, Ben. What is the greatest difficulty you've ever encountered in your life and how did you get through it? Go. Oh, man. Fuck you. Damn. Um, I'm looking at the clock. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, it, it gets, I, I have something, but it's a little personal. What's the personal. part about stuttering on your words? <laughs> I, think, I think the biggest uh, achievement I ever went through was... Um, Remember, Ben, your uh, co-hosting job is on the line here. Okay. It's... um. Being able to find forgiveness, I would say. Please explain. Please elaborate. So growing up most of my life, I lived in a very... See, this is what I'm saying. Like, this is a very intimate thing. And like, this <laughs> is on the you podcast. Know. Do you not want to say this? Because that was a half joke, by the way. Oh, it was. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. To, You don't have to. I'm no, but I, I have a good one. Okay, I, fine. I have a good one. I'll ask you this in real life. And then if... You're, uh, you're not going to fucking Hey, guys, if you see Ben on the podcast next week, that means he passed this interview test. He's not going to ask this kind passed of shit. interview test. So going back to what ChatGPT said, we need to like implement policies that promote fair hiring practices and ensure equal opportunities for all career advancement so i'm just gonna say something really stupid is there a way to look at resumes without fucking names because names are oh, that, even yeah, before yeah, yeah, you yeah, look yeah, at the person's yeah, face yeah, yeah, the can you do like a anonymous resume here we are on this like when you apply to something right instead of putting your name on it give yourself like some kind of code it's like a Prison you number. <laughs> it's like a prison number. Okay. Every person just gets like a unique prison number or something, right? Okay. So when you apply, everything on the documents obviously has your schools, your uh, your cover letter, whatever. But your experiences and stuff e like that. Everything. Okay. But in place of names and sex and stuff like that, uh, it's just a fucking number. Okay. So like no one has a bias. Let's say you don't like women because you're a dipshit, right? Or you oh, don't okay. like Asian people because you're a racist, right? Yeah. 
Jennifer Park. So uh, you hate women, you hate Asian people. It's just add user one four 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 six seven. Exactly. That's it. That's it. You don't know sex. You don't know race. You don't know any of that shit. Just that little bit alone. And now someone much smarter than me can like tell me why it wouldn't make sense. I think we both can agree that like when it comes to getting a job, right? It should just go to the most qualified. Um, it's a combination of the most qualified and the person that can perform the well in your situation. Right, right. Those two, I think it should be enough. I say this as a person that's applying for jobs that I am uh, not qualified for. <laughs> I'm trying to say that. If you yeah. guys are going to hire me, just remember, it's not all, all about qualifications. Oh. It's not all about qualifications. It's about taking that chance. You it's know? about like knowing a person and whether or not you can see him succeeding and learning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Wow. Okay. That was your interview part now. <laughs> so there are certain things that are just not quantifiable on paper i just don't know how you take the race part out of it because even if you okay. get to the final Thank stage you. where you have to physically interview someone or nowadays zoom interview someone okay you're still seeing a face right when you see an asian face when you see a whatever face you have assumptions right okay okay let's get to the next part before this thing gets even longer um this might be the, the final one for today so we might actually do a two-part thing so, okay the next big thing is language and cultural barriers okay. so as an asian person not in your native country Holy shit, Ben, you're really sweating a lot. You're like glistening. This is almost like a pregnancy glow. Thank you. You're just sweating a lot right now, and I guess it makes you look kind of... I think I'm going... I'm, I'm having a heat stroke right now. <laughs> I think that's what I'm having. So the next problem is language and cultural barriers. I think that's the thing where people are just in a different country, and because they don't know the language or they don't know the culture of that okay. uh, country that they're in, that it's hard to make progress, obviously, when you can't fucking speak or when you don't know whether you should like fist bump or handshake or bow. You okay. know what I mean? Like there's things like that, right? Right. Okay. How would ChatGPT um, uh, help these people out? Let's see. Let's see. Language support programs establish education assistant programs in schools, healthcare facilities, agencies, or other non for profits okay. that provide interpretation services and, trans and translated material and free language education. Should. That's All the right. obvious thing, right? Yeah. Okay. I think on right. the cultural part, cultural exchange programs facilitate and exchange programs that bring together diverse communities to foster mutual understanding and appreciation of each other let's tackle the language part i think that's like that's pretty easy question that's a math question right yeah if you're missing something you add that thing and then you're good to go <laughs> yeah right right, right 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 if you're missing the language you add that language but how do you add that language it costs money to like pay for classes obviously yeah just uh youtube guys watch a lot of k-pop you know what i'm saying netflix i guess technically duolingo is free duolingo is free still Ex except, for the ads. except for the ads except for the ads rosettes don't cost money don't do that shit okay just kidding my bad my bad unless you uh download wink wink the certain versions of it uh-huh yeah <laughs> yes but we won't tell you how not saying that we do never do okay all right don't know what the torrent is so that makes sense that okay fine that part is easy at least here in Queens, we do see there's a lot of places that do all offer free language services. Yeah. There's free educational services. There's like uh, certain like uh, clinics that are just not just in one language, but have a lot of bilingual people that work there that make things a little bit easier. And those resources are very limited. They are. They are. Because it costs That's money. Crazy. This is actually a problem that you can throw more money at. That more money directly translates to like... Legislation. No, no, just no. Fuck the government. You throw more money at this problem somehow, you either via like a billionaire investor or like a non for profit. Yeah. You set up more places, facilities that give resource centers and stuff. Free education. Okay. All right. Free translation services. Yeah. This is literally just throw one more money at the problem. <laughs> Yo, there's some other shit like how do you make hiring less racist? That's that that's like a cultural thing. That's like a, a societal behavioral thing. That's hard to solve. Yeah. Okay. This fine, language yeah. shit, just fucking throw more money at it. Chat GPT, for most part, makes a lot of sense. These are very sensible uh, solutions. Yeah, but why do you think there's not enough money being thrown at this problem, though? Do, do you feel like it's we're kind of moving into that direction at all? Well, we have a very skewed take on things because we live in Queens. We live in Flushing. We live in Queens. There's like a hundred languages here. So we see the services community invests in the community which is different right. i think our take will be completely different if we were like somewhere random maybe there's a reason why it's not being offered in some other states i guess if you're thinking about like like all across you know america right yeah it's not gonna happen you ever thought about like some of these problems it just takes one billionaire like well, all like, these tech billionaires all these whatever people just like take your chunk of money uh -huh. like a large chunk of your money focus it on like a very specific solvable problem problem like this like i don't mean like solve world hunger because it has like so many layers to it right? Yeah, right, right i mean like specifically like okay we're gonna make sure there's like facilities and there's proper resources equal to the citizens there that provide language services 
in all these places. It, it's a very monumental uh, project. It is, but it's something that I can see like actually making sense. You're solving a problem. Because once you teach someone how to like speak a language, yeah. they can then like solve other problems for themselves. What's the thing about like fishing and teaching a fish and all this other bullshit, right? Oh, uh, you could like, you know, fish and, <laughs> okay. and you could fucking grab a fish and feed it to a dude, but if you teach him how to fish, you And he can grab his own fish. <laughs> and then he can open up a supermarket. Yes, I think that's what it was, right? <laughs> Some shit like that. Yes, exactly. And, the same thing. and then more Asians will come to him. Just imagine if like when we were kids, when you had to do all the translation services for your parents and oh, I had to do God. all the translation services for my parents. PT fucking SD, man. That was terrible, dude. Imagine if they just learned English. Not to throw the problem like right, it's right. their fault, right? Because they're trying their best. But I'm saying like if they had the resource and they, and they just learn English, yeah. there's so much more that they could do for themselves. Yeah. Well, can I ask you this? Do you feel like most of the things that ChatGPT said, and I do see a lot of that happening, our views, this whole podcast is fucking skewed based on our upbringing, based on where we live, based on what we see. I walk out there and there's like a million Chinese people. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm just being for real. Like, I don't ever feel Yo. different. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Not a part of the crowd. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a million Asian people that look just like me where I am. But like, there's tons of listeners that are in places where they walk out and like, clearly they are the different people. They are the other people. Pretty much what you're saying is that we need to create an Android, put a, a chat GPT in it, and then it solves everything. Let's get into our favorite part of the whole podcast, ranting and raving. Okay. All right, Ben. This is the part where uh, you and I like to rant about something shitty going in our lives or rave about something uh, negative. Wait, wait. You literally said the same shit. <laughs> I, just, I was just to say, you do it. Wait, wait. This is not the second episode of three in a day. This is not. Yo, yeah. It's we're been not a while. tired. Nope. We're, we're not tired. We just, I just got here. We don't. <laughs> we, I literally just got here. We don't have another one hour to scream at each other. Fuck. <laughs> I don't think I have any more t-shirts to change into, by the way. Fuck. And you're going to wear the... Ben, real question. On the no, next on the next just recording... Just throw paint on me. <laughs> should, should you wear no t-shirt? Or are you sure you wear that back? <laughs> should you wear that backwards? Do you I'm, think anybody would know? Back. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, let's, let's see, if, let's see if, our, if our true listeners know. Oh, okay. What the fuck was I saying? Oh, right, ben, uh, rant, ranting and raving, ranting bro. Raving. Or we talk about something shitty or something bad. <laughs> okay. That's what we said. Yes. <laughs> what do you have to talk about this week? Or do you want me to go first, Ben? Oh, uh, you can go first, man. Okay. Um, I'm <laughs> looking at my notes. <laughs> I don't know what I'm have to do. Uh, do you want me to go first? Okay. okay. Um, I think I have a really great. A okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. Okay. Maybe this is already a real product, but I think I have a million dollar idea for a new product. Imagine there's a toilet seat, right? There's a toilet seat cover. Okay. And imagine to open that toilet seat cover instead of using your hand to physically pull it up or using your feet in some weird like balancing act to kick it up. Imagine there was just a foot pedal, like some kind of spring loaded system where you step on the foot pedal and then the seats to the toilet just go all the way up, both the seats open fully. And then you as a guy with okay. a penis can just stand and pee <laughs> yes, without having you. to touch anything. Tell me how that is not a pretty decent idea. You know what? You could probably make it. Yeah. I, you just need to sell enough. I think you'll make money. I think it's a pretty good idea, right? Yeah, actually, yeah. It's like, it's like a foot pedal toilet seat opener system. Are you going to be like fucking Billy Mays and make like an infomercial on Obama? No, because I think I was outside somewhere at the public toilet. And you know, most public toilets are fucking disgusting. Yeah. And especially when I take my son to the toilet, like I have to, for his uh sanitary needs, I wipe that shit down as much as I can with all the toilet paper. Okay. Sometimes I take the whole uh, roll of toilet paper. And I use that. <laughs> oh wow, you're a fucking asshole, bro. <laughs> what a fucking asshole. I use the toilet bro. paper like a like a sponge, like yeah. the whole roll, like a loofah and shit. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, you're those guys. I'm anyway, just kidding. no, you're not. You're not I know you're not kidding. All right, so go on. Yes, I I would just like the toilet seat cover just to go up, just to go up by okay. itself without me touching anything, without him touching anything, because. Eventually, he's going to get to the point where, and this is just me looking out for my son, okay. where he has to go to the bathroom and pee by himself. I would prefer him not to have to wipe down his entire area before he just takes a quick oh, pee. Oh, bro, you know he's going to like fucking grab it both sides and just lift it. Yeah, and then like use those same hands to like touch his junk. He's going to hold it up while he's taking a piss too, bro. That's not good. That so is true. I'm just saying if maybe just in commercial bathrooms, they had this system. Okay. It would be nice. Okay. I be could, could kind of see it. It, I think it's it a could, great idea. It could it could work. I think it's not like a billion dollar idea, maybe, but I think it's yeah. in some it's situation. Like, uh, yeah, I can see it. It's like the thing that like just microwaves eggs, you know, like I seen on TV. Right. It's like a very specific use case scenario. It's I, a quality I, of life change. I hope you patent this because uh No, I don't have time to patent shit. I gotta fucking 
stay up all night editing that <sighs> episode from last week. By the time you guys listen to this episode, I will have already stayed up all night. Oh my god. <laughs> Current Linji is not looking forward to that, but past Linji to you guys uh, is... Uh, Love you guys. I, he's probably tired anyways. Love you guys. Alright, Ben, what do you have to bitch about this week? Uh, you know about like the new trains now that are... Uh, are you talking about city? subway trains? Subway trains, yeah. Yes. It's like There's a lot less seats on them now. Are there? Dude, it's what? terrible. So there's a lot more standing holder pose? Yeah, dude. So you know like when you walk into the train, right? You know at the end, they always have like two seats to three seats and yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are all gone. So so the ends of each cart in the subway are now just all standing areas? Right. And you know like the ones that are in the middle? Yeah. They shorten those too. So there's less seats there too? There's way less seats, bro. What is the benefit of that then? They're trying to just cram more people into it. You think it's a cramming thing? Yeah, it, it is. So now if, when people are standing, you can fit more people. Are on. there more poles? Or like, are there more handles? Yeah, yeah there are. But every, I, could, I could tell it's the new one. Oh, fuck you. I already see it. Oh, that's because you're a person that always likes to sit. Yep. I love sitting. That's my hobby. That's my <laughs> number one hobby. But yeah, I was like, fuck, man. These things are fucking terrible. Man. I was in a bus semi recently because I don't take mass transit that much. Uh -huh. But I was in a bus. I remember for the first time in a couple of years. Yeah. And I was so amazed at all the new things on the new buses because I genuinely okay. have not been in the bus at that point for so long. I remember I was looking around like a fucking tourist. I was like, holy shit, you can press to stop. You can pull to stop. There's automated yeah. doors here. There's a electronic announcer to tell you what the stop, what the next stop is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you used to take the bus sometimes as kids, I remember I personally got constantly lost taking the bus because I didn't know what the fuck I was. You didn't give like, a fuck. You would have to either ask the bus driver, hey, can you like tell me when we're near Main Street and 130 something or something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But now with these new buses, it tells you every stop. Next stop, 149th Street and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Next yeah. stop. It tells you, it just keeps going because it's a fucking robot following the GPS. I love all these like quality of life improvements on the bus. I was so delighted to give them my, my 350. Damn. I bet you for the trains, it's like that too. Like there's something that's better because they're taking away something that's good. Like seats? <laughs> They're giving you something in exchange for those seats. No, fuck that, bro. It's bullshit. Is the huh. AC system more powerful? No. it's ha ha Yeah, has to be. Why? I don't know, because it's new technology. It's probably more efficient. What, Dude, the technology of air conditioning hasn't changed for like 40 years. Technically, it has. Have you seen those new split systems that go through the window? It's like U-shaped. Bro, that's just, it's the same and then, shit. Like, before 10, 15 years ago, we never had these mini split systems on the wall. But, you, but how do they run? It's they, the same, it's the no, same it's thing. more efficient. Because the condenser is completely outside, so it's much more efficient. And the handler's on the inside. I'm saying, like, there has to be something about this train. Is there less graffiti, then? Is there less homeless people? No, dude. There's the same about homeless people. Oh, yeah, definitely. And the worst part is, like, now they have even more real estate now. Have you seen the thing where a lot of cities are trying to do, like, anti-homeless design architecture? Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for instance, guys, if, if you don't know this, like, let's say at a public park, you have, like, a bench, right? It's like a three-seater bench. Yes. So, it used to be, it would just be, like, a handrail at each end, and then the middle is three seats, but you can lie down. So, in, in lieu of that, they'll do, like, a bench where the handrails are in between every seat. So, yes. now, you can't, t you, you cannot lie down anymore That's because true. the rails are everywhere. You see, in some uh, subway stations, instead of, like, seats, they have standing rails. So, it's, like, waist level. Uh-huh. Thick bars where you can rest your butt and your back. Oh, on. they got an angle and stuff. They got an angle. The new trains have those. Yeah, it's it's that instead of a seat. Oh, jeez, man. They say it's for what for blah 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 reason, but a lot of it is just they're, they're trying to stop people from being homeless and sleeping in these certain areas. Huh. So it's like anti-homeless architecture, which I, kind of fucked up in some ways. No, but homeless people will literally just sit on the floor. It right. doesn't matter. That's but, what I'm saying. I'm trying to say like now you're you're giving them less options now. Even less options. You're taking away even less options. Homeless are very crafty, man. By the way, I have a very soft spot for the homeless in my heart, so um, I'm oh. not trying to make fun of the homeless. I, yo, dude, I didn't... Way to make me sound like I <laughs> fucking like they hate the homeless and shit. Okay, just to defend Ben, Ben does give a lot of like money to panhandlers. Like, yes, he, I'm yes. homeless myself. That's <laughs> ben, what he's saying. Ben has sympathy. Empathy? Yeah. What's the one where you can relate directly? Empathy. <laughs> empathy. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this guy. we're at the outro guys um I, I do appreciate you guys taking the time to listen to this episode stay tuned for part two of this ai solves all asian problems uh it's coming up next week um a lot lots of ums because i'm just trying to get ready we're not about to record the next episode right after this definitely not definitely not ai is not taking over the world ben is gonna put on a different shirt even if it looks exactly the same yes i am <laughs> that's right can't can't 
AI just like you know artificially make something. I guess me? technically you could, right? Thank okay, hold on. God. I had one thing I had to do here. Um, before I get to that part, once again, guys, if you liked our content, please leave us a five star review on Apple or Spotify. Gang, um, gang. Written review is always great. Give us a thumbs up emoji. Sometimes I know people don't know what to say or they don't want to like comment publicly because mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of weird to like say something publicly. So if you don't know, throw us your favorite choice of emojis. I don't know. Th- thumbs, yeah, up, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. A robot face for AI. Coffee cup. Coffee cup. I don't man. know. Your favorite choice of fruit emojis. It never really matters, but um, it does a lot for the algorithm and that's all we really ask for. If you guys want to support us directly with your... Uh, Monetary money? Is that a thing? Monetary. <laughs> if you guys want to support us directly with your hard earned money by giving it to a very not good cause, you can donate. Not donate. It's not a donation when you get something in return. Oh, you're right. That's a purchase. It's a transaction. That's true. You're right. It's a mutually beneficial relationship. That is true. In return for your four ninety nine every month, you get one extra episode where we talk about a bunch of bullshit. Uh, still of no value. Still complete pulling it out of our asses, but. You get that episode regardless. Yes. It's it's a work of art. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a work of it art. It is a work of art. We don't know what, what we're talking about this month, by the way, but we have a whole back catalog that's in these subscriptions that you can listen to all that. We have a lot of fun. We, we, we genuinely do have a lot of fun with those. My, it's a lot more laid back too. Yeah, my favorite I, yeah. episode, which might be like the first or second one, was when we, we talked about what Ben and I would bring if we were deserted on a desert island. Yes. You said um, the sex doll. I did not say the sex doll. <laughs> but Ben got very close to that sex doll, though. <laughs> one of his items. Um. Anyways, we do genuinely appreciate it. We will catch you guys next week. Uh, oh, follow us on all the social medias. You can follow us on Threads, which is the new Elon Musk t- uh, Twitter killer. Oh, uh, yeah. There you go. Follow Threads, us on baby. Threads, Facebook, TikTok. Yeah. Technically, we're on Twitter, but we don't do shit there. YouTube. We're on YouTube. We're on Instagram. Facebook Reels. I think the only thing that we're not on is just Snapchat. I think that's honestly, oh, shit, right. that's honestly the only thing that we're not at. So no matter... What your age and your choice of social media handles, you get the same bullshit across every single thing. So That's follow right, us at guys. Worst Asian Pod. Okay, until next week or until uh, five minutes from now, we'll see you guys later. Yeah, thank you. Bye.